book of John chapter 15 bearing fruits John chapter 15 from verse 1 I am the true vine somebody say the true vine I am the true vine and my father is the husband man my host my father is the husband man every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth that word purge there means he prunes he prunes he prunes he purgeth every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth it that it may bring more fruit somebody say more fruit um, so when Jesus looks at your life and you are bearing fruit what he does is that he, appear, he applies the pruning hook somebody say pruning hook either you call it a pruning hook or you call it the pruning knife whatever you want to call it when Jesus sees that you are bearing much fruit Uncle Toby, help me reduce that in a little when Jesus sees that you bear fruit what he does is that he applies the knife to you but this time it's not the knife that cuts you away is the knife that cuts you into shape so that you can continue to bear much fruit he said i am the true vine and my father is the husband man so my father is the vine dresser somebody say the vine dresser my father dresses the vine my father dresses everything about me so that i can bear much fruit so he said every branch in me that beareth not fruit he take it away and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth it and it may that it may bring much fruit now ye are clean through the word which i have spoken to you how are we clean which what we are clean through the word which he has spoken to us he said lord sanctify them by thy what thy word for thy word is truth sanctify them cleanse them make them whole make them pure by the words he said ye are clean through the words which i have spoken to you so the lord has a a medium for when sanctification um, is achieved there is a medium in scripture for when cleansing is achieved there is a medium through which we are purified there is a medium through which we are purged and that purging system is engendered by the speakings of god that purging system is achievable by the cleansing of the word of god he said sanctify them by thy word and thy word is truth the word of god is truth Praise the Lord. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. You can see that now. The branch cannot bear fruit of itself. The branch must have an abiding, abiding formula, an abiding principle. You must, if you are sitting at the back, don't, don't give me any space. Cover up the spaces in front of you. Don't give me any space, I beg you. you are the branches he said abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye no more can ye except ye abide in me so you see the the when you look at the trail of what we are talking about in verse 5 he said i am the vine ye are the branches so Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth what? Eh? How does he bring fruit now? Much. The same bringeth forth much fruit. All right? For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is what? He is cast off as a branch. In other words, you will be disconnected. You will be dislodged. God will cut you off. All right? He said, you, you, if a man abided not in me, not when a man, but if, because your abiding is contingent on your choice. Your abiding is predicated on your choice, on your decision. 
if you want to abide with Jesus, the implication of your staying with Jesus, the implication of your remaining with Jesus is that you will not only bear fruit, you will experience what um, Uncle Femi was talking about. From fruitfulness, there are four categories of our growth in that place. How many of you can remember what he said? From being fruitful to what? From multiplication to what? For replenishing to what? Subduing. Are you getting it now? Now, all of those processes has been captured in Christ Jesus. And there is a reason why Jesus used the word, I am the true vine. If you don't understand that reason, you will probably throw away the Bible study and the attendant implication of what it means to be fruitful. Prior to the New Testament, the Old Testament, the children of Israel were seen and referred to as the vine of God. Am I communicating with you? They were seen as the people that were divine of God. Divine of God. They were the ones that God we call my vineyard. They were the vineyard of the, of the Father in heaven. Everything that God wanted to do, they were the source for which God would do it upon the face of the earth. Matter of fact, they were the go-to people upon the face of the earth. So God was giving us an example in the Old Testament of his vine and the vineyard. His vine and the vineyard and how they should operate and how, how he intends for them to live their life. Now, you must understand that God in his infinite mercy never wanted anyone to be barren. Help me look at your neighbor and tell him eyeball to eyeball. Tell her too that God never intended for you to be barren. God never intended to, for you to be barren. He intends for you to be fruitful. He intends for you to increase, multiply, subdue. That's God's intention. Amen? So you look at that and then you see God saying to us from this scripture, he said, Jesus is the true vine. In other words, Jesus is the accurate example of what it means to be knitted with God. Jesus is the accurate example of what it means to be connected to God. The connection here, it's a metaphor of a farmer, the work of a farmer, the farming, uh, the land, and then what to be planted. So Jesus is the vine because he is that seed of Abraham that was planted. If you help me say amen. So Jesus was planted and he germinated. And the germination is what you call resurrection power. Am I communicating with you? The seed that was planted is what you call death. When Jesus died, the seed dying and decaying in the soils of, of time and in the soils of the earth. When he decayed, the Bible said three days later he resurrected. So we are talking about the ability for Jesus. Now look at the limitation in the life of Jesus before resurrection. Coyote, one of the limitations of Jesus' life before, before resurrection was the fact that he couldn't go to everywhere at the same time. When there is a problem, Jesus will need to travel to the place before there can be healing. When there is a situation, Jesus will need to move from Galilee to the next point. If Jesus wanted to teach, there is nothing that will happen because he was operating as a seed. But upon his death, there was resurrection. What did resurrection do for us? He became fruitful. What was the fruit? You and I. Now Jesus can travel to Jamaica. Jesus can travel to Ghana at the same time. Touching lives. As I'm holding this meeting here right now, other people are holding the same meeting. Teaching the Bible. Teaching the word of God. If it was when he was alive, he wouldn't achieve it. He will need to say, I'm going to teach in Capernaum now. And then after I finish teaching in Capernaum, I will have to go to Bethany. When I'm through with Bethany, I will go to Ghana. Galilee, when I'm true in Galilee, I will go to Jordan. So the implication of fruitfulness is that he was able to subdue all nations at the same time upon his resurrection. If you are with me, say amen. amen. So one of the things that fruitfulness does is it gives a multiplier effect. It breeds the ground for multiplication. 
It breeds the ground for increase. What therefore is fruitfulness? To be fruitful means um, not to be barren. To be fruitful means the inability to be barren. You are not, you are not barren. You are not barren. The inability to be barren. So he said, I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. That is a, that is a statement. That is, a, that is a, the, not, not statement, I beg your pardon. That is the parlance of a farmer. That, that word there, if you therefore need to understand the operations of a vine and you want to understand the operation of a husbandman, then you need to study a little bit on farming. You need to go into the principle of what it means to farm, what it means to sow the seed. I just told us about the seed, Jesus being that seed and how that seed we need to fall to the ground except the, the corn of wheat falls to the ground and die. What happened? It abides alone. You see the alone syndrome because you will not see the multiplier effect. You will not see the fruitfulness. Sow one, um, one corn to the ground and then it gives you about four or five cups or so two. Plant two um, corn uh, on the ground and then it gives you, it, it, it sprouts, grows up and blades out. And when it's blade out, I mean all the flowers are out. And after that, then you begin to see the fruit. The fruit begin to emerge. Maybe it gives you one, two cups on the left and maybe two, three cups on the right if you are with me say amen and by the time you bring out the cup and you want to begin to peel off the corn from the cup all right you 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 count more than i don't know how many you'll be able to count from one cup of corn but what you planted was just two it went through the process of decaying in the ground and before you know it it, it began to develop vein in the ground so that it can it can take on water it can take on everything that you need everything that the plant will need to grow so he said god is my wine dresser why is god the wine dresser and what is the implication god ensures that as a wine dresser there are no weeds around the plant somebody say weed you know the parable of the 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 the, the, the wheat and the tears okay so god is there to ensure that no there is nothing that will happen upon harvest upon harvest we will ensure that the fruit are well gathered together and put in the barn and then whatever is of the tears will be gathered together and what be burnt if you would me say amen now all of this is not part of my note but as i'm teaching the holy spirit is just widening the word in my spirit so god is the husband man the work of the husband man is to ensure that the land and the seed are in safety the work of the husband man is to ensure that the land the land the cultivated ground is safe and then the seed is also safe for germination jesus now said i am the true vine and my father is the husband man i said to you that the reason why he said he is a true vine is because before now there is there was a vine before now there was a vine genesis um isaiah chapter 5 from verse 1 isaiah chapter 5 from verse 1 and i want you to see the beauty of this vine what god how God took his time to dress out this vine. I said to you that God is the husband man. God is the dresser of the vineyard. If you help me say amen. amen. Who is the dresser of that vineyard again? God, God is the... So, so Jesus said he is the true vine. Now Isaiah chapter 5. Where is Isaiah chapter 5? From verse 1. Now I will sing to my well-beloved to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his what? Vineyard. My well-beloved had a vineyard in a very what? Ladies and gentlemen, this, this vineyard was planted on a fruitful hill. Come on. The, 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 the vineyard, God took his time and God called the vineyard my what? Talk to me, church. Not just beloved, my well-beloved. What is the implication of that statement? The implication of that statement, Pastor Okbe, is this. God has many vineyards. God is everywhere, but God is not ruling everywhere. God is in the life of every man, but God is not ruling in the life of every man. God is only ruling in the life of the people that has given him the right of way. Men that have accepted his government, 
men that have come to accept his instructions and are submitted to his counsel. So he said, I will sing a song to my well-beloved. And this my well-beloved is because I treasure her so much. So you will see that the children of Israel, the way they were portrayed to us, even in the New Testament, is as a she. She. Somebody say she. God is presenting Israel to us using the female version or the female folk um, similitude to speak to us referring to Israel as his well-beloved. And I said to us that when you want to look at the way God deals with a nation upon the face of the earth, how God loves a nation, you will not look at Nigeria, look at Israel. It is true, Israel, you will begin to see what it means for God to be aroused as a jealous man or as a jealous personality over a people. If you are with me, say amen. amen. And I really want you to stay with me because we are going very far today. God helping us. So he said, I will sing this song to my well-beloved as touching my vineyard. Okay? Um, this, this, this vineyard is already planted on a hill. And that hill is not a, is not a patched hill. That hill is not a desert hill. That hill is not a hill that seeks for rain before the seeds will germinate. Germination here is not the problem. The issue here is my well-beloved. My well-beloved, I have planted my well-beloved on a hill that is fruitful. How many of you know that the Bible says we are what? We are a city set on a, on a hill that cannot what? Be hid. So we are a city set on a hill. So God saying to us here that Israel as my vineyard was well planted. I planted my vineyard properly. Help me look at your neighbor and tell him you are well planted. You were planted. planted on a fruitful hill. So when people look at you and they say you are going through a process, yes, that's fine. But within your process is that, within your process is the assurance that God planted you on a fruitful hill. So, and, and, and you remember that the reason why you are planted on a fruitful hill is because you are God's well, what? Thank you. And I said, when he planted you on a fruitful hill, what did he do? And he fenced it. Somebody say fenced. So you see, again, God protected the seed. God ensured that when you were planted, you were not left to the enemy. You were not left to scavengers. You were not left for destruction. When God planted you, God brought an embankment around you. God built uh, security systems, reinforcement to ensure that there is no incursion of violation into where you are there is no there is no sudden break in and break out that everything god was doing about this seed there was intentionality somebody's intentionality so god was intentional from the beginning there was intentionality with this seed now the first thing that was intentional about the seed was that god planted you where on a hill that is fruitful. God never intend for you to be barren. I said to you, one of the implications of being fruitful is not being it's not being that's one of the implications that the Lord declares you fruitful. It means your life will lack the ability to be barren. That when we look at your life, when we look at your career, when we look at your disposition to the way to your to your to to to, to your um, to your course in life, when we look at your disposition to your career, when we look at your disposition to how things play out in your life, we will say of a truth: this one is not barren. You are not barren in your body. You are not barren psychologically. You are not barren mentally. You are not barren spiritually. Everything about your life is producing. Everything is producing. That's because the Lord whom you serve, who turned you into his well-beloved, planted you on a hill and brought on you security systems that will ensure that you prosper, that will ensure that you move and make progress. So he said he fenced it. Ah, 
This my well beloved is well protected. Mm. Spiritual patterns, family altars, all of those things cannot take a toll on this my well beloved. You know why? My well beloved is planted on a hill that is fruitful and I have fenced him. And then I have gathered out the stones. Somebody says stones. I will quickly explain these things. He said, he fenced you, that is protection. He gathered out the stones, that is hindrance. The things that will hinder your manifestation, obstacles. Jesus took his time to gather out the stones, restrictions, limitations. He gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with what? Edge, what is the meaning of choicest? The best. So when Jesus was saying, I am the true vine. So that's why Jesus is saying to us now that I am the true vine. In this scripture, he was what? The Bible said, in that vineyard, the plant that was there was the choicest what? Was the choicest what? But before the choices vine, what did God do? He took time to clear out the place. He took time to secure the place. So why are we not fruitful? Jesus took his time to clear out. And then he planted it with the choices vine. And ladies and gentlemen, and built a tower in the midst of it. What does a tower represent? Eh? A watcher. An intercessor. The Bible said Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father and making what? Intercession for us. So, Jesus Christ, oh my God. I want you to bow your head and say, Lord, help me to be fruitful. From today, I will live a fruitful life. I will not only live a fruitful life, I will lead a fruitful life. Come on, open your mouth and talk to Jesus. I will not only live a fruitful life, I will lead a fruitful life. I will bear fruit on all front in the name of Jesus. I'll be like a palm tree. Every part of me is important. No aspect of my life will be useless. No aspect of my life will be unuseful. Every aspect of my life will be useful. I receive grace. I receive the ability today to be fruitful and to bear fruit by the power of God, by the strength of God, by the help of God, in the precious name of Jesus. From this day forward, I bear fruit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So he said, um, and he fenced it and gathered it out, uh, and gathered out the stones thereof, and planted it with the choicest vine, and built a tower around it. Okay? The, the ability to, you need the tower as a whistleblower. Somebody say a whistleblower. Uh, the tower as one that, 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 that sounds the alarm when the enemy is coming when intruders are coming you sound the alarm that's what God did to this vine God ensured that there was security reinforcement God ensures that obstacles that will hinder your growth were taken care of by him okay and built a tower in it and also made a wine press what does the wine press represent what does the wine press represent represent the Holy Ghost Represent the spirit of God, the spirit of the, the spirit of God. Be not, um, uh, be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be thou filled. What? With the spirit. Uh, uh, be filled with the Holy Ghost. So, uh, instead of being drunk as with wine, the thing you do is you be filled with the Holy Spirit. Am I communicating with you? So, God also look at the symbols, look at the items that were in place for this choices vine. Are you with me? Look at the things in place for this choice vine of Jesus. This choice vine of Jesus had in it fruitful field. Had in it the fruitful field. Had in it the fruitful field, which is the hill. Has in it the clearing of the stones. Has in it a fencing that you cannot break in and break out the way you want. Now, this is God saying, this is what I did. Am I communicating with you? He said, and then I planted a wine press therein. And this is where I am going. The reason why I did all of this is because I am looking to harvest. I am looking to make profit. The reason why God is saying to you and I, be fruitful 
or go and bear fruit is because he has an expectation of your life. Help me tell your neighbor, when God said be fruitful, he has a result in mind. He has an expectation. You, it's a good place to write that God expects me to be fruitful. God is desirous of me being fruitful. Every time God anoints a man, he didn't anoint him for himself. I've said this to you several times. Every time God encounters a man, he didn't encounter him for himself. Every time God encounters a people, he didn't, I mean, every time God encounters a man, he encountered that man with a generation in mind. He encountered that woman with a generation in mind. He encountered that brother, that sister, with a people in mind. The anointing over your life is not for you. It's for impacting people so that people can come. How God anointed Jesus with power and what? Holy Ghost who went about doing good. I jumped it. Okay, I paraphrased. How God anointed Jesus of, Naz uh, Jesus of Nazareth with power and the Holy Ghost. Who was what? Healing. All right? He was healing them that were oppressed of the devil. He was doing good for God was with him. So the reason why Jesus, when you are anointed, one of the ways we will know is you can't sit down. An anointed man that sits down is not anointed. Because the anointing will push you to do good. There are two things the anointing will do. Well, number one, he can drive you into the wilderness to be tested. Okay? Number two, he will drive you into demonstrating that power and that anointing. You cannot say you have healing anointing and you have not healed one person. And you say, I have the gift of healing. When Reverend Austin prays for me, my hand is always hot. It is not the reason why the anointing is there. Last week, I had to lay hand on people here because I know the function of that anointing on my hand is not for healing. When my hand is hot, it is for me to bless people. And that's why I kept shouting, you are blessed, be fruitful, be blessed, be fruitful. But there are up when apostle's hand is hot, is for the healing of the sick. Praise the Lord. So there is a reason why God anointed you. There is a reason why you are working. I was speaking with all my, my, my friends who came to see me recently to give me, to put me through his plans for the year and we looked at it together. And he said, look, Rev, I, I want a turnover of nothing less than $500,000 this year. I, I don't want you talking about the forge anymore, the way you talk about the forge. When we were, when we were going to buy the land, I know how much he gave. He gave us in, in millions and he said, I see you talking about this thing, this thing. I don't want us to be talking about this thing. So this is, this as my father, this is what I want to do this year. This is what I want to do this year. These are the businesses I want to engage in. We sat down, we looked at it, and I said, okay, son, do this, do this. This one, give you some time. He wants to be fruitful. And he knows why he's being fruitful. He knows that his fruitfulness is not so that he can go to Singapore or Switzerland and tell us that I'm living the life. He knows he's been fruitful for the sake of the kingdom. You must know why you are anointed. There are people who their anointing abhors oppression. If they see people that are oppressed by devils and demons, they say, what are you, what are you doing? Hey, get out, you this reckless spirit. So, one of the things that the spirit of fruitfulness should do on you is to bring you to the place of restlessness until you make impact. Restlessness until you make impact. The spirit of fruitfulness should trigger restlessness in you for impact. Let me rephrase. The spirit of fruitfulness should trigger restlessness in you until you make impact. Because it's in your making impact that God draws profit. So, he said, and... And he looked that he should bring forth grapes, and he brought forth wild grapes. Can you see that, Sister Florence? God was looking for grapes. What came out were wild grapes. At what point God planted you as a seed, not just a seed for God's sake. He planted you as a choicest vine. At what point did you become a wild grape? At what point did you become a wild grape. At what point? 
Somebody help me read Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 21. Quickly. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 21. God has expectation of and his expectation are grapes, not wild grapes. You have become a wild, a wild plant that cannot be spoken into, that cannot be corrected, even though you were first, but within the first environment, and God has an expectation of your life, what is coming out of you is wild grape. An incorrigible kind of person. Somebody that cannot, when, oh God Almighty, I want you to pray that Father, may I not disappoint you when you are about to draw profit from my life. May I, may I not make you, may I not, may I not cause you regret when it's time to draw profit. You know how many people, you know how many, how many people God has trained and God is saying it's time. I want to, I want to harvest Nigeria through your voice. And all of a sudden there will be scandal and God will say it is time. I want to use your business to, to, to reach the world and to marinate Nigeria. And all of a sudden they will say ELCC is chasing you. Ah, my God, when it is time for the anointing of God to be sounded in Lagos. May you not be found wanting. When it is time for the anointing of the Lord to be sounded through your voice to the nations, may you not be found wanting. When it's time for an entire generation to say men and brethren, what shall we do? For what Peter said is true. When that fruitfulness is coming, when that multiplication is coming, may your lifestyle not hamper it. May that fruitfulness not be attacked just because of the way you live and the standard that you are beginning to uphold. He said this vine suddenly became wild grape. Jesus deliver me. When it's time to reap from your investment, may I not be found wanting. When it's time to reap from your labors over my life, may I not be found wanting. God wants to reap in central bank. God wants to reap in commercial banks. God wants to reap in microfinance banks. God wants to reap in businesses. God wants to reap in, 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 in the farming industry. God wants to reap in pharmaceuticals. God wants to reap in medicine. God wants to reap. And you are the choice vine that he has planted so that you can bring forth grapes. You can bring forth after your kind where you are planted. He wants fruitfulness from your life. I love Look that it may bring forth grapes. Behold, it brought forth wild grapes. God expects fruitfulness. God expects result from your life. And in the name of Jesus, when it's time for that harvest, you will not be wild. Oh my God, people suddenly becoming wild, becoming uncontrollable, becoming unmalleable. God can no longer manage them. Now they know God. Now they are the uncles of God. Now they can bring their options. Now they can bring their opinion. But before this time, they were pliable. Before this time, the Lord can use them. The Lord can instruct them. Now they give God options and they give God counsel. What happened? He has become a wild grape. But our Lord Jesus, you will protect me. Defend your interest by all means and by all costs in our lives as RCN. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Help me with Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 21 before I proceed to read the other things here. And when he looked that it should bring forth grapes. Somebody say bearing fruits. So God was looking for you to bear fruit. What he saw was wild grape. We are going to do a write up on this. The wild grape. Why, will you, why do you have to become wild? Look at the labors of the, look at the, labors of the father. Number one. Do you, did you notice that this seed was planted on a hill? You were planted beyond the reach of attack. And when you were planted beyond the reach of attack, this fruitful hill, oh my God, I don't have time. Scriptures are opening. It means to be planted with Christ in the heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. 
where you are untouched or untouchable, at what point did you become wild? At what point? God gathered you out. He gathered out the stones. Things that will suppress you in the earth. He gathered it out. Took it out. And then he fenced you. And then he planted the tower. Intercession. Prayers. So the prayer is the... How many of you know what they call prayer rain? The rain is prayer. Tower. To sound alarm. To pray for you. And then when he was done, he now said, this is the seed. It's a choice seed. Now plant it. When God was not ex expecting bearing fruit. You sell fruits, right? You know what it means to have a spoiled, one spoiled fruit among others. The rest will spoil. So one spoiled vessel will spew weaknesses and everybody becomes something else. Wild grape. God is expecting grape. God is expecting much fruit. But what he saw was much wild fruits. Men that can no longer be tamed by God. You know, I told you last week I was praying. The Lord said something to me. He said, son, there is a problem with this generation. My fear is waning. My fear is leaving the church. And that's because we are teaching, the, the kind of teachings going on, uh, you are the righteousness of God. It's true, we are the righteousness of God. But the Bible says it's a dreadful thing. It's a dreadful thing. To dishonor and to disobey the, the Lord. For he's a consuming fire. God having this seal. He knows those who are his. Therefore, let them that name the name of the Lord depart from what? Iniquity. Help me read that, Jeremiah. Yeah. Yet I planted thee a noble vine. Yet, you see, that other one talks about a choice. A choice what? A choice vine. So, number, this Jeremiah here said, Yet I have planted you nobility nobility you are a noble vine when 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 you walk you walk you walk like a noble you walk you walk like a son of a king you walk you walk with majesty and honor and dignity i have planted you with a noble what planted thee a noble vine a noble vine only a right seed only a right holy is it holy Holy, yes. a right seed. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. How then art thou turned into the degenerate, degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? How have you become a degenerate plant of a strange vine? Of a strange vine. So when Jesus was saying, I am the true vine, he knew what he was talking about. He was the true example of what it means to sustain the desire of the wine dresser. Of the vine dresser. That the vine dresser is dressing you. The vine dresser is pruning you so that he can draw results. And the vine dresser is doing that, taking time to do it painstakingly because he knows if he does his job, what he should, what he deserves is not wildness. What he deserves is fruitful, what? Fruits. So he said, bear much fruit and let your fruit abide. The reason why your fruit, therefore, will abide is because you are not wild. Have you not seen people, Pastor Victor, in the body of Christ, who through their rise in many roles and through their falling, many more refuse to follow Jesus? By their rise in many roles, but by their falling, many more fell. The days when God is going to reap we are not dead. May God help us. Amen. If you are not praying for yourself, pray for me. May God help me. Amen. May it not be that when we are done with this building, the best thing we will do is, what is that thing when you are showing people around? May it not be that what we will now be doing is come and see. Paul, you know I've been using video to show my guys when we are talking and say, see what thing Jesus do. But may it be that the motive is pure. Because that was what Hezekiah did. That may God turn back on him. He said, come and see. But he said, come and see what my hands have done. 
the day that the king of Babylon should melt was the day he opened the gold to, to the king of Babylon. When they saw it, they said, man, these guys are rich. So when the days of war came, they said to the king, oh boy, we need to go to Israel. There are fruits there. Ripe. The man opened the treasuries for us to see. How do you open your treasuries to a strange person? Because you also have become strange. If you help me, say amen. amen. How have you become? How do you morph into this kind of a thing? Because when I planted you, I planted you as a noble entity and I'm expecting fruit. Somebody shout, bearing fruit. It therefore means from these scriptures that it is either we are bearing fruit the right way or we are bearing fruit the wrong way. Either way, you must bear fruit. Did you get that? Are you with me? Either way, Pastor T, we bear fruit. It is either we are bearing fruit unto God and glory or we are bearing fruit unto wildness and carnality. So God expects God expects ROI from your life. Pastor Grace, God expects ROI return on investment. God expects return on investment in your life and in my life. And that return on investment is in your ability to bear it's in your ability to bear so God has planted you as a choice. So Jesus now said he is the true vine. Therefore, the only way you can sustain your relevance, the only way you can sustain the ability to bear much fruit for him is in your what? Is in your abiding syndrome. In your abiding syndrome. That you can abide with him. You can dwell with him. You can remain in him. Just as he remains in the Father. So you see, when we talk about this equation, there are constants and there are variables. There are two constants and there's one variable. The vine dresser is constant. That's the husband man. He is constant. He, the one that trims, he is constant. And I said to you to be fruitful is not to be barren. So, he is constant. And then the vine, the true vine, the true vine is what? Constant. The way the problem is, is the variations, the vacillations of the seed, of the branch that is connected, sorry, not the seed, of the, of the branch. And that is why, Pastor Ogbe, did you notice that where the cutting takes place for pruning is the branch? Where the shredding away takes place for throwing away is also the branch. Pastor Victor, has it occurred to you? It is the branch that is the problem. When the branch bears more fruit, God will trim it. He will cut it well to, for beauty. But when the branch is not bearing, it just comes. And that is why when Jesus was looking on a tree, because he has expectation, the tree, the only trouble of that tree was that it became green. On the wrong time. It became visible. Because the Bible said. It was not yet time to bear fruit. But it became visible on the wrong time. And greenery means that we are ready to eat of this fruit. So you can't tell me that you don't have fruit. Because any time you look like somebody. That is meant to bear fruit for the kingdom. And we cannot draw profit from you. <laughs> I don't want to say it. God has expectation. I tell you the truth and lie not. As I studied this matter, these were the scriptures I was looking at that I said when Papa said this year will not waste. I understood that, that scripture. Not only this year, no part of my life will be wasted again. Amen. I will not have wasted conversation. I will not have wasted counseling sessions. I will not sit down with husband and wife who are fighting every day for four years. I will not have your time. I will not engage on wasteful counseling sessions anymore. If you don't wake up, I will turn and I will go to a generation that is hungry, that needs God. 
but I will no longer waste my resources. I will not cast bread to swine anymore. You must bear fruit. And fruit that will abide. Because, you see, mm, let's read, let's complete this, let's complete this, my Isaiah parable. Okay? And now, O inhabitant of Jerusalem, and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, between me and my vineyard. Pastor Victor, judge. How many of you can boldly tell God, these are my labors, and this is the result I'm getting? He so says, now, O inhabitant of Judah, is it Judah there? Men of Judah. And men of Judah. And Jerusalem, judge between me. Now, now look at God the judge. God the judge is God the judge is bringing himself to your generation. God the judge is bringing himself, subjecting himself, Reverend John, to be judged between him and us. Drawing the conclave of the Jewish community to judge between us. All because you have decided to become a wild grape. And I, God is saying, I can't understand how you turned out. I want you to bear fruit, but the fruit you bore are wild. How did you become like this? Somebody judge up between me and them. Tell me if I was partial. Tell me if I didn't do the things I should do. Because I planted them with the choicest vine. I planted them on a hill. I put a wine press there, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. I put a watchtower there. My son Jesus is seated and interceding on their behalf right now. What else do they want? But they have still become a wild grape in my hand. I planted them as a noble seed. Look at the way they have turned. Judge between me and them. Kai, may God not call you to the, to the box. May God not call you to the witness box. It will be a treacherous thing for God to look at your life and say to you, what did you do with my investment in your life? Help me look at your neighbor, look at him very well. And tell him, come out of this deceit. You are not that young. Look at another person. Come out of this deceit. You are not that young. Look at another person. Tell him, come out of this deceit. You are not that young. Let me tell you, the people you can call young are Oshoke. You that you have beards already. This, I, this, 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 I'm not going to rush this series of fruitfulness. It's a command. God has expectation. God has expectation. If it will take me six months, we will do a thorough teaching, a thorough layout. By the time we are done, I will say to you, to your land, O Israel. And now, O inhabitant of Jerusalem, a man of Judah, judge, I pray you, between me and my vineyard, what could have been done more to my vineyard? Can you see that? What more could I have done? Jesus Christ. Uncle Toby, what more could have been done? What could have been done more to my vineyard? Is a question. What more could have been done? What more do you want God to do? When he gave you his son, he gave you his best. When he gave you the Holy Ghost, he gave you his all. There is nothing again in the heavens apart from Jesus interceding for you. The great, the great, when I say there is nothing in the heavens, I mean God has bequeathed the all. To you, the Holy Spirit. That is why the Holy Ghost is your helper. That is why the Holy Ghost is your advocator. The same Hebrew word, Greek word was used for the helper and was used for the advocator. Parakletos. Parakletos. He takes care of legalities in the spirit and he takes care of infirmity on the earth. Your legalities are taken care of because he's an advocate with the father. Your infirmities are taken care of here. We know not how we ought to pray. Why? Because the Spirit does what? Helps our infirmity. 
He makes it intercession on our behalf and then he helps your infirmity. So that's why I said to you, he's a paracletos, an advocator in the spirit to care of, take care of your legalities, a helper, an intercessor upon the face of the earth to help your infirmity. So he said, what else could have been done that I have not done? Agatha, what else have I to do to you that I have not done? Tell me, Agatha, tell me. That's what God is saying here. Shinato, what else should I do for you that I have not done? What revelations? I steer you up. Sometimes you don't respond. You, you are so powerful now. I'm not talking about Shinato. I steer you up. You don't respond. You now know the A, Y, B, A, B, C, D of my movement with you, and you know the X, Y, Z. You can supply the answers of the in-between. You know, you can predict me. The last time I checked, he said the oppressions of the believer is like a wind. He says, so ask them, what is this thing? What could I have, what could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Ebami bury. Austin do unlike a tembesu. Ask them. What did they think? What mean nine? Ask them. I'm speaking my dialect. Ask them. What else do I need to do that I have not done? Niniwe nine. Niniwe nine. Ask them for me. Ask them. How can we speak that in French? Ask them for me. Ask them. What more should I have done? Bearing fruits. So, we, we, when we talk about bearing fruit, we are not talking about the inability to bear fruit. We are talking about the danger of bearing wild fruit. Because either way, you will bear fruit. That's what I came to tell you, Tony. Either way, you will bear fruit. But may your fruit not be wild. Amen. You see, there are times that, there was a time in RCN when I saw the way some people were turning out, myself and my wife would look at ourselves at home. I would say, are we teaching the Bible? I think I've also did that with her. I said, are we really teaching the Bible? Because if we are teaching, why are these kind of things happening? I will be troubled. I will see modern day, uh, uh, I say modern day, I will see day, daytime manipulation. I will see daytime spirit of Absalom. I will see daytime. You see, there are people who have nag for visibility. There are people who have nag for different things. Control. And then there are people who will tell you ten times in two months what God has said they should do and they have not done one. And then you begin to wonder, and then one day I had to sit down to x-ray the things I have taught. And I said, okay, Lord, I think. So in order for us to, to say that there's no one's blood in our hands, two years ago I sat down and I said, Reverend Gideon, let us leave this issue of ascendancy. Oh. Let us leave this issue of, there are 10 people there. This was why well, me, I even, as at that time, as before this time, I only do those, those kind of stuff when I go out. So some of the people here will tell me, uh, uh, you are Pasha. You don't do these things at home. I, I said, no, I don't want to do this at home. I don't want you to, I don't want to, I don't want you to get used to that feeder. I want you to eat raw meat and bone. So that the day I'm not here, when somebody comes to tell you that this shoe I'm wearing is from Italy, it's fourteen thousand dollars. If you believe, come and sow seed. You will tell him you are a thief. Or as he's saying it, you can stand up and go, and God will not judge you. You are not a people that should be easily moved by emotions and sympathetic preaching, because you know your left from your right. That's what. That's the goal I want to achieve. That when you are moved to give, you give because there is a reason, there is a goal for the kingdom, and there is a profit for God. Not that we come here and raise money, and the next thing that will happen is Reverend Austin will go and buy a brand new car. I've seen it. I've been to Lagos to preach with my spiritual father many years ago, and we saw the roof, rain, rain was falling, and we raised money. And the next day, the man went to a car shop and bought a brand new car. And when you see, say, glory to God, we are fruitful. 
turn to three, four, five people and tell them, Jesus said, be fruitful. That's not the kind of fruitfulness we are talking about. If you are with me, say amen. amen. If you are with me again, say amen. amen. So he said, where are we? He said, what could I have done? Wherefore, when I looked at, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. And now, go to. I tell you, you see when you hear the word go to, you remember Genesis 11. Go to, go to. And now go to, I will tell you what you will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge, number one. When you become wild, I will take away, you know, you know, somebody say edge. Edge is in, is in Job chapter 2. Has Job served you for nothing, seeing that you have built an edge around him, his family, and his, his household, and his substance. Reverend John, everything about Job was hedged in by God. So he became impenetrable. You, you, you cannot touch him. You cannot violate him. There are no losses in his business. If he invests in stock market and he says stock market will collapse, because he's there, it will be held until he makes profit. When he removes his money, then it can collapse. And if at all it will collapse, by the, middle, by the dream of the night, the Holy Ghost will come and tell him, oh boy, move, oh, move now. Somebody say now. So God will build an edge around Job, build an edge around his children, build an edge around his substance. There are many of you, you have edge around you, but you don't have edge around your business because you don't use your business to glorify God. There are many of you, you have edge in your marriage. You don't have edge around your children. They cannot touch you, but they can touch the children. There are some of you, you are gallant in yourself. Your wife has no edge. He says, see, since they are becoming wild, I will take away my edge. May you not be exposed. Amen. If you are not a witch, louder. Amen. May you not be exposed. May Amen. I not be exposed. You know, I told you many in one of the teachings. I said, when your weaknesses are seen, it means you lack grace. Because grace covers for your weaknesses. So he said, tell them, now that you have judged and you have, you have seen me faithful, strike the keyboard for me. He said, one of the things that will not happen, please, sir, thank you. One of the things that will not happen to you is that, you know, there must be caught. You don't just command people. Okay? So, one of the things that must happen is that you will be edged, you will be protected, you will be defended. He says, since you have refused to bear fruit, I will take it away. Not that you have refused to bear fruit, oh. you have borne fruit, but they are wild. So since you are wild, let me take away my covering. Let me take away my what? Ah, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. Painful, but I will do it. If this will bring you back to your senses, I will take away the edge thereof, and it shall be what? Eating up. And what? Break down the walls thereof. And it shall be trodden down. Look at, you know, you know the implication of that trial? The things you used to overcome before will suddenly begin to overcome you. The things that were outside trying to attack you that couldn't attack you. Because you have decided to, be go, to go rogue and to go south. He said, one of the things I will do, you don't know, go and ask David when he committed treachery before God. And God said to him, I'm about to judge you now. Choose which one you want. Hmm. If I should leave you to the people. Kalimo, Shabari, and Talo. He said, to who do I go? To who do I fall? If you leave me with men, they will finish me before time. I will rather fall to you. I will rather fall in your hand. Because he knows what men will do. You know how many ravenous we, um, uh, 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 wolves are waiting for you? God takes away his edge. They will eat you and eat the cloth. <laughs> it's biblical. Was that not what they did to Jesus? They, even his cloth, they collected it. They thought they were doing him favor. They didn't know they were freeing him unto much fruit. So God says, when I beat down the walls, you will be trodden upon. Meanwhile, you were meant to tread upon serpents and scorpions. 
and what? No hurt will happen to you. But because you have decided to bear fruit, I have said to you tonight, the issue here is not that you are fruitless. Nobody is fruitless. The problem is, as a child of God, you are bearing wrong fruits. And the wrong fruit is called what? Wild fruit. Wild grape. I decide not to be wild anymore. And I will not be wild until I bow out from the earth. I will take away your fence. The edge that is around you. That thing that makes you feel you are untouchable. I will take it away. That thing that makes you feel you are untouchable and you are arrogant. You are not bearing fruits the way you should, my child. I need to teach you a lesson. What I need to do is to touch your finances. I remember how God took away that edge. Because those days when you tell me you are hungry, I will say you are lazy. Go and walk. You are a lazy young man. I don't say that anymore. Before I will call you lazy, I must have seen you for three years. Say, I'm lazy. No, 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 no. God said, okay, let me show you what it means. Here am I in my house for one year. You see, one year now, I can't remember. I could not pay security gate for 2,500 naira. One month, two, six months, two months, three months, four months, five months, six months. The, 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 the grace to call somebody lazy died. Because now I know that bread is not by strength. It's not of him that will it. Neither of him that run it. But it's of the Lord that showed mercy. Except the Lord built a house. He that builds, builds in what? In vain. And except the Lord watches over a city. He that watches, watches in vain. So I can watch a city and thieves can still enter. Hey, I can see. When the chairman called me pastor. Because he put my name among debtors. And they wrote it in capital letter. Pastor. When the man saw it, he said, you don't used to, oh, what happened? I could not answer him confidence. I was crying on phone. He said, Pastor Austin, what happened? I saw your name at the gate. And I know you don't usually, oh, I busted into tears. I started crying. The man caught phone. He said, how will, how will an adult be crying? The father of two at that time be crying. And why? It was because I refused to do ministry. I said, I want to take care of my wife and my children. Amy Lododo is not ministry. I don't want anybody to talk to me. Oh, say, Reverend Austin, what is going on? No, that was pride. And God said, I will take off my edge. When he took off the edge, Kai, Satan, Satan buffet me. I know what it means when Jesus said, I will take off the edge. I have been there. Whatever will make him take off edge in my life, may it not be born. May it be that it will not be, may, may the, even if the edge will be taken, may it not be because I'm stubborn. May it be that it's an occasion for promotion like Job, that a conversation ensued in the heavens where God was boastful of me. And Satan said, let me take his money and see. And thank God that when all of those things happened to me, I didn't backslide. Thank God when I was going to come out of it, I came out stronger. I know what it means for edge to be taken. I couldn't afford school fees. I couldn't afford house rent. My father-in-law called me. He said, the steepest you are paying, when are you going to pay? It's over four months. I said, daddy, give me some time. He's my father. He says, okay. He's, he's talking. He's not, he's, not, he's, not, he's not even rent. But I couldn't afford the token. That's what I'm saying. That token, rent is about 1.2 million that time. I was paying 400. As a token. I couldn't afford it. Rent there now is about 2.8 million. So me, I don't, I don't even say I pay rent again. I don't pay. Because it's this figure I mentioned to you earlier. If you know it, it's the same I'm paying. <laughs> so I don't pay rent. Many of you pay rent. Are you with me? But Papa, even though I didn't pay, the one that they, I'm supposed to give as a token to show that I'm not a lazy man. Do you understand this? <laughs> he couldn't come. Because you see, but your wife is working. That time, uh, our trucks were misbehaving. You would just go from one mechanical fault. Salaries would just go viam. It was like I was working and Sodom opened his mouth and was swallowing everything I was doing. Those were the days I would drive and I would bash people. 
I will drive, I will, my, I will lose my senses, and I will, so I know what it means. May God's edge remain in your life. What does, what's the implication of this scripture? The implication of this scripture is that it's not only causes that work in our lives. When you refuse to bring the accurate fruit before God, you are, you are, you are endangered. You are in danger if you don't bring. I will take you to that place next week. We are, we are, we are, I don't want to rush. If you don't bear fruit, God is not happy. Jesus is not happy. You know, I spoke to our leaders. I said, replicate yourself two by two, three of you. If you are one person in media, replicate yourself in three people. We must not be stranded when you are not around. It's a war to you. I have done my part in RC and Lagos. I am not afraid of traveling. I've replicated men by the grace of God. I've replicated not only men and women. They can stand and hold this ground. If I'm here, if I die today, you will not lose anything as a ministry. I have raised men. God has helped me. Carved some of you into shape. That when I'm not here right now, I can boastfully tell you right now that I can travel for one year and this place will grow. Because there are men. There are women. Is it Ruth that will hold the mic and you will not know that God is with her? Is it Chinato that will hold the mic and you will not know that God is with her? Is it Turayo? Is it Pastor Grace? Is it Dami that will teach you will not know that God is? Is it, is it my combustible essence, senior son, that will speak and you will not know that this one can, this one is, is a turbine? Is it Kayode? That we come and I, I'm waiting for the day he will come and give you worship songs. Painstakingly sit down and listen to them speak. They will not only speak when I'm out of town, I will shut down because I know the benefit of fruitfulness. So God will not say you have worked as a selfish man. And I'm saying it publicly today that God has helped me. I have witness in this house that there are fruits and they are abiding. Send them anywhere. They can stand and they can hold that altar. Because I speak to them whenever I have an opportunity. I speak to my pastors. Don't be afraid of any platform. No platform is bigger than the grace you carry. When you go there, you can shake, speak in tongue and swallow up the platform and open your mouth for at that very hour take no thought of what you will say for by at that hour it shall be given to you by my father who is in heaven he is the source of all utterance he will give you spirit energized communication that relates the heart of God to the heart of men piercing words words that are sculptured by the spirit words grounded and empowered by the fusion of spirit life God is not happy when his sons are not bearing fruit it's not only demons that will chase you he will take away his edge when you are not bearing divine fruits that he expects we Look at this, oh. Pastor Victor, there are two words in John 15 that we used. The vine and the pruning. I will come to pruning next week. Next week, we are looking at bearing fruits. Um, pruning. Pastor Abbey, next week, we'll be looking at pruning. So let's, let's look at what he says here. And now go to, I will let you know what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the edge thereof and it shall be eaten up and break and break it down and break down the walls thereof and shall be trodden down and i will lay it waste what will ha what will not happen i shall it it shall not be pruned nor digged it shall not be pruned the scripture we read earlier he said when you bear fruit what happens he will prune you he said because you have refused 
you see, the application is the same. The pruning and the tr trodding down is the same. The only thing is that this one is you are cut to shape, trimmed to size, so that you can grow more and bear much fruit. But the, uh, he said, it shall not be pruned, it shall not be digged. It means that you will come to a place where the depth of wisdom you used to do business will no longer flow. Certain things that should flow out of your life divinely, the divine resources of heaven will just shut down. How many of you have been there before? Where you just know that for whatever reason, I don't know if God decided to be silent on me or there is something. Heaven just shuts down. No mobilization of divine resources. When you open your mouth, you are dry as a pastor. When you open your mouth as a prophet. Look, you know when you have bad days. Only you know. I go for meetings and at times I have bad days. Only me will know. When I leave, I'll tell my wife, Kai, 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 no. When we were in Canada, the first night I told her, I said, Kai, I don't feel, I don't feel my spirit. You will not be digged. I will not prune you. And if I don't prune you, who is a farmer here? What's the implication? Huh? There will be weeds. You are exposed to attacks. Your immunity, your resistance level will drop. Your sensitivity will go. I will not prune you. It is a blessing to be pruned. It is a blessing for you to have a man of God that prunes you. Because milk spoils with time. Huh. But honey gets better with time. Wine gets better with time. But milk spoils with time. If it's not well cultivated, it spoils. But you see wine, bro, the older the wine, the better and the sweeter. You don't want to bear fruit? God God has a quarrel with anyone that refuses to bear fruit in the kingdom. There is a quarrel. It's an ongoing quarrel. You don't want to bear fruit for him, but you want to bear fruit for Satan. You want to import all kinds of dance. You want to import strange apparel. You want to import strange attires. Your mind is fruitful when it comes to corruption. Your mind is fruitful when it comes to stealing. You are an expert in giving deadly advice and counsel. But when it comes to the issues of the kingdom, you draw back a wild fruit that you have become. A degenerate plant. And God planted you as a noble vine, as a noble seed. If you are with me, say amen. amen. And I will lay it waste. And it will not be pruned, nor digged. But there shall come up what? Barriers and what? Tons. And I will also command the clouds that they rain no more upon it. I will seize my favor from her. There will be no longer rain of revelation. There will be no longer rain of illumination. There will be no longer rain of what? Inspiration. When you lack inspiration, when you lack illumination, and when you lack revelation, you are dead as a Christian. You are as good as a natural man. When, they are, when those three things are ceased from you, it means the candle for which you should use to traverse this, 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 this earthly perverted generation has been taken away. You are going to walk like mere men. And that's not our portion in the name of Jesus. No rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord is for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is what? The house of Help me tell your neighbor, when God talks about vineyard, he was talking about people. He was just using metaphor to explain. He was talking about you and I. It is you and I he was talking. He said, for the vineyard of the Lord is what? I can't hear you. Is what? The house of Israel. They are the ones. It is you and I. So Jesus, Jesus, therefore, if you take this and you plant it in the New Testament, let's do the permutation now. When you take this and you plant it in the New Testament, Jesus is the vine. And then the branches. So who are the branches? We are the branches. And Jesus is now saying that, look, the command for, for, the command for fruitfulness in that order 
in that order is not divine the command for fruitfulness are what the branch the branch that's where God is commanding fruitfulness now the branch the branch is what he wants to bring fruitfulness. Say, for the vineyard of the Lord of the host is the house of Israel. And the men of Judah, his pleasant tree. Why is the men of Judah his pleasant? Because in between the feet of Judah, the lawgiver will proceed. Number one. Number two, it is out of Judah that God is what? That God is known. Out of praise. So you are my choicest vine. Why is the house of Judah the choicest one? Because number two is the lawgiver. So it means that they will produce the king. They will project the king. The kingship of the kingdom. The priesthood of the kingdom was sold to Levi. Somebody say Levi. The Levi. And then the kingship of the kingdom was sold to who? To Judah. And kingship and priesthood will go together. Alright? And it's in kingship and in priesthood that God derives pleasure. For he has made us kings and priests unto our God. Okay? So, you see, in that, in that kingly order, God is calling them the choicest vine. And the reason why they are the choicest vine is because it's in them that he enacted authority and power. It's in them that Israel will begin to win their warfare. They will gallop in war and they will not be trodden upon. They will gallop in warfare and they will have victory because they work as sons and daughters that have authority. So God expects that as we proceed, oh my God, as we proceed, so Judah is his pleasant plant and he looked for judgment. That word judgment there means what? Justice. But behold what? Oppression. For righteousness, but behold what? A cry. That is what happens when you refuse to take your place. You are supposed to be regulators. And you become a regulator because you have multiplied. Because you have subdued. You know there is a church in Nigeria. When everybody was crying. This financial regulation that time. That there was no cash. That church had cash in abundance. They own a bank. And they owe more than four microfinance. <laughs> you can't you can't you can't you can't keep them they know well enough that the time will come that they will want to trouble them because of their message they started their own coin whether it's coin or money there's they have their own money that they used to transact within themselves now is that what i'm promoting that's not what i'm saying with you i'm just telling you the extent to which they have subdued you can have that thing you can that they are not money you can change it into nigerian currency you can change it into american currency i just i just heard about it recently they are trying to build their own satellite now to host it there so that when social media people and the other platforms are saying you cannot do anything they have their satellites there that ministry is 10, 20 years ahead of his generation. If you still watch their videos now, it's as clear and sharp. If you watch his 22,000, year 2000 video, it's still very sharp. You already know the church I'm talking about. Oh, you don't know? That means some of you don't even know history. Watch his videos of 2010. It's as if you are even watching now. Even his dressing that time. Just like me now, my suit that I used for wedding 15 years ago is still applicable to this generation. By what means can men travel like this? We were... We are still galloping. Some of us are still vacillating. You are not stable. You are like a reed. 
when will you become a beg help me look your neighbor again say look at me look at me look at me you are not that young i really want you to sink because this deceit of you staying in one room and you are happy this deceit this deceit it will die this year you are not that young you will wake up tomorrow you'll be 40 like joke like joke you apostle will call you and give you the lecture of what what, what you what you should expect now that you are 40 he did it to pastor victor now i've been not one to you he, he did it to pastor Okpe. and then he said now that you are 40 i will need to talk so many of you that as you are clocking 40 i'll be telling him because there's a lecture there's a there's there's a lexicon for it he will see and i'm telling you he will sit down passionately say now when my wife clocked 40 say okay um, you need to be taking multivites now uh, is it multivites have you uh, is it vitamins they call it me i'm not consistent with it he will say oh boy how far i say papa they try i know you you <laughs> no talk say i don't tell you bore bore Praise the Lord. Huh? For righteousness. How, how will God have righteous men in place if you refuse to rise up and impact people? How? How do we win by righteousness? Is it by talking? Is it not by replenishing? Eh? Is it not by you replicating yourself? Pastor Ope, I know you are a pastor, but you will also you will be involved in some travels. It will be war to you if you if you don't replicate yourself on time. It will be war to, to, to this is not me, it's Bible. It will be war to Tadius. If, if if you don't know what it means to look at other people and give them opportunity and sit down. If it is in choir, only two of you are running things, it's a war. If it's in media, only Abbe and Michael, it's a war. We must be fruitful. You must replicate yourself. You must replicate the grace of God upon your life. You, faith God, should be able to say, okay, let me take two, three people among choir and let me pour into them. Damn it. Pour into them. Pour, pour. Somebody say pour. Pour, pour yourself into people. Pour yourself. It is a woe if you travel and we are stranded. It means your department is not fruitful. It means you are, you, are, you, are, you are lacking substance. I know many of you will not like me, but I will tell you the truth. I'm speaking the scriptures. God is able to do just what he says. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't hey. give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Can you take that song? Come on. Just what he says he will do. He's gone. 